Okay, so we're going to do the human digestive system. I think there might be a few more videos on this topic, but um, I thought I'd just introduce you to uh, our body. It's a bit it's a bit old and past it to be honest. So I'm just going to take out our lungs, um, possibly our heart if I can get it out. Not sure I can. Nope, firmly glued in place. So, um, kind of most things that we're going to deal with are sort of down in this region. This is the abdomen underneath the diaphragm. Um, and obviously your ingestion is taking place up here somewhere. So this is where you take your food in. Give it a good old chew, mix it up with saliva, do a bit of starch digestion, that kind of thing. Um, roll it into a nice ball with your tongue called a bolus. And then that is effectively going to bypass the lungs and heart in the thorax um, by being squeezed through the esophagus by peristalsis. I would have a very odd flashing light on this, but anyway, carry on. So underneath your rib cage and underneath your diaphragm, You've got this very large organ, this is your liver. Uh, it does have uh, does thousands and thousands and thousands of reactions. I don't know whether to, can you see that? Oh yeah. So um, the bit that we're interested in for digestion is the fact that it makes bile, which is stored in this gallbladder, this bright green thing. Do not put that in with your Christmas gravy from your turkey. Um, and feeds down into a bile duct which leads into a part of the digestive system. So I think the most common question that I get asked is uh, what's an alimentary canal? Well, this is your alimentary canal. The tube that goes from your mouth to your anus is the alimentary canal. Also called the gut. I know, really, why would you do that? Why would you have two terms of the same thing? It doesn't make any sense. So. Looking at where our food goes then, it's coming down through the esophagus and it leads straight into the stomach. And the stomach is this kind of J-shaped organ. It has a, a sphincter at each end, I know, amusing, amusing word. And the sphincter is to control the passage of food. So your food sort of, you know, plops down into your stomach and it's going to stay there for a bit. Um, the length of time depends on what components of diet you've taken in something fatty might stay in there for quite a while and then you've got a sphincter to let that the stomach contents through into the later parts of the digestive system so what goes on in the stomach is uh, it's got three layers of muscle so it can churn the food up and it's going to make it from being a little solid ball like a you know a very small uh, falafel into a liquid called chyme and that liquid is going to be very acid so one of the things that your stomach does is it secretes acid that activates enzymes provides the ideal pH for the main enzyme in the stomach which is pepsin which is a, an example of a protease uh, and it's going to make the whole thing into a sort of a, a liquid called chyme it also the acid kills any bacteria so if you eat something dodgy um, the whole point of sort of staying there and having a couple of sphincters is that you can open this sphincter and throw it all back up again and get rid of it. Uh, once it gets past there, the only way out is through your anus. So, once your food gets past there, it then passes into this area called the duodenum. So here we can see that green uh, tube there, that's the bile duct coming from the liver, delivering bile into this bit of the small intestine, the duodenum. And we can see this sort of very diffuse, it looks like a lump of fat, it's not, it's, that's the representation of the pancreas. And the pancreas is producing a lot of enzymes um, and releasing them into the duodenum here. So the bile duct and the pancreatic duct both lead into the duodenum. Pancreas is providing enzymes and the bile duct is providing bile. The pancreas also produces an alkaline fluid because of course everything coming in from this organ, the stomach, is acid. So you've got to make it alkaline so that those enzymes will work. So their optimum pH is around about pH 8 
and you need some alkaline. And to help that, the duodenum has its own set of glands uh, that are um, submucosal glands called Brunner's glands and they also then release um, alkaline mucousy fluid into there. The food then passes through uh, into the small intestine which as you can see is this sort of mashed potato event down here. It's really really long and it's uh, effectively the, the, the small intestine is the ileum, this bit, and the duodenum. All of the small intestine has folds called villi and those villi increase the surface area vastly of the uh, small intestine. In addition, their epithelial cells that coat the villi are covered in microvilli to further increase the surface area. So this is the area of the gut where you're doing the digestion, you're doing that hydrolysis of those big molecules, you're releasing amino acids from your proteins, you're releasing glucose uh, and maltose and disaccharides out of the sugars that you eat and you're releasing fatty acids and glycerol from um, the lipids that you eat. And then you've got to absorb all those small molecules, so that's why this uh, huge surface area. Um, it then passes into the large intestine, so this is the start of the large intestine here, or the colon. Um, I'm going to kind of ignore the appendix, it's, it's got loads of bacteria in and this bottom area is called the cecum and we'll, that's more important in other animals as we'll see. Um, <clears throat> the latest sort of theory about the function of the appendix and cecum is that they um, repopulate your colon with um, good bacteria after infection. And effectively what happens in the colon is it's a big water absorbing thing. So remember that we had chyme, liquid, made in the stomach. Everything's liquid. We can't really afford to lose that much water. And so the water is reabsorbed. So as we move along and more and more water is taken away, the contents, the indigestible things, the things we couldn't deal with in here, are uh, become more and more and more solid. I think you know where we're going with this. And they then move down to the rectum, which stores the faeces, and then we've got another sphincter um, to let them out of the anus. So that's a lovely thought, isn't it, for the first thing in the morning. Let's hope you're not just about to eat your lunch. Uh, all the way through the gut, enzymes are molecules, they don't know what they're supposed to be digesting. Um, so, you know, effectively if they collide with a protein, uh, protease will uh, digest it. So all the way through the gut you have goblet cells which release mucus and they not only lubricate the food at the sort of top end of the gut in your esophagus, and at the bottom end of the gut as the indigestible things are leaving. Um, but they are also forming a very protective, the mu mucus forms a protective layer over all the cells so that when the enzymes are colliding with the, the edges of the tube, they're not actually digesting the cells of that tube. So that's a kind of an overview and we'll have a little bit more detailed look at all the different bits in a later video.